All right, guys, in this video, we are going to take a look at another example. This time, highlighting a common mistake beginners such as ourselves are likely to make. And this is even more relevant to you if you're learning hooks with the knowledge of class components. Let's begin. For this example, we are going to create a simple counter. But this time, it is going to automatically increment every second. Let's quickly go through the class component implementation of an interval counter. You can see that I have a file called intervalClassCounter.js. First, in the constructor, we create a state variable called count initialized to zero. Next, we need to create an interval timer that is going to update the count value by one. The place to create timers is component did mount. So I have created an interval timer that runs every second. And every second, we execute the tick method. The tick method basically increments the count value by one. So every second, the counter increments in value by one. Timers also need to be cleared to avoid memory leaks, which we do so in component will unmount. Finally, in the render method, we display the count value, this dot state dot count. If we include this component in app.js and take a look at the browser, you can see that the count value increments every second. Now let's go back and implement the same with functional components and hooks. I'm going to create a new file called interval hook counter dot js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a functional component. First step is to create a state variable. So import use state and create a variable called count initialized to zero. And we also render this state variable in the browser. The next step is to set up our timer. And you can see that we need to replicate component did mount and the tick method. Let's start with this tick function. Const tick is going to be an arrow function. And within the body, we call set count, passing in count plus one. Next, we use effect to replicate component did mount. And we've already learned how to do that. Import use effect, which is basically a function call, pass in an arrow function, and within this function, we set up our timer. Const interval is equal to set interval. We need to call the tick method every second. Now, this effect is going to fire after every render. If we only want the interval to be set up once on initial render, that is component did mount equivalent, we simply pass an empty array as the dependency list. And that is the second parameter, an empty array. The final step is to replicate component will unmount for the cleanup. So from use effect, we return a function and within that function, we clear the interval. Let's save this file and include it in app.js. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see that the class counter is working as expected, but the hook counter is displaying the value of one and not incrementing every second. Let's try to figure out the problem. In our mind, the problem statement is simple. Create an interval once and destroy it once. So create it in component did mount and destroy it in component will unmount. If we take a look at the hook counter, we have definitely translated that. Empty dependency list, so the timer is set only once and return function to destroy the timer that we have created. Why then? doesn't our counter work as expected. 
The problem here is our mental model and I'm going to quote from Dan's article. If you think dependency array is a way to specify when you want to rerun the effect, you're going to run into problems. Instead, dependency array should be thought of as a way to let React know about everything that the effect must watch for changes. So our mindset was to simply replicate component did mount. However, by specifying an empty array, we have basically told React to ignore watching for changes in the count variable. So React goes like, hey, on initial render, the count value is zero, which implies set count will set it to zero plus one, which is one, and I will render that in the browser. Now you are telling me that I don't have to watch for changes in the count value. Count value is one right now, and I will just render that value through the different re-render cycles. If you want me to watch a variable, just add it to the dependency array. What I am trying to say here is that it is a common beginner's mistake to leave out the dependency list. If we now add count as a dependency and take a look at the browser, you can see that we get the expected result. So whenever you try to specify an empty dependency list, please make sure that you really don't have any. By the way, for this example, there is another way to get it working without the dependency list. So in the tick function, we use the second form of set count. We get access to previous count and we set previous count plus one. Now, since set count keeps track of the previous count value, we don't have to specify count as a dependency for this particular effect. Save the file and take a look at the browser. You can see that the counter still works. Now your code might be different to this example, so always think before specifying an empty dependency array. Let me also give you a handy tip in this regard. Sometimes you might want to call a function within use effect. So function do something console.log some prop. Now let's call it within use effect do something. When you do this, you look at use effect and it's very easy to forget that some prop is a dependency. Some prop is used in do something, which is called in use effect. But it doesn't necessarily seem obvious when we take a look at use effect. So what is recommended is whenever you need to call a function within use effect, just go ahead and define the function within use effect. So I'm going to move the function inside use effect. This way, when you read through the effect, you're much more likely to see that you have a prop which has to be specified as a dependency. All right, that is pretty much it for this example. I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to make mistakes when specifying the dependency list for use effect. Now, one last thing I want to quickly show you, which I felt did not require a separate video, is about specifying multiple effects. If you recollect as a motivational reason for hooks, we had seen that in class components, related code is split into different lifecycle methods, whereas unrelated code is put together in the same lifecycle methods. Hooks solve that. It is possible to include multiple use effect calls within the same component. And I'm just going to quickly show you a screenshot from the React docs. You can see that we have two use effect calls. Right before use effect, we have use state corresponding to that effect. We have basically grouped related code together and the code looks much more organized now. So if you have multiple effects to run, make sure you separate them out rather than having all the code in a single use effect. 
All right, with that, we come to the end of a series of examples that reveal different details about the effect hook. Starting next video, let's see how to apply what we have learned so far and learn how to fetch data from an endpoint using the effect hook. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to hit the bell icon to be alerted when the new videos are uploaded. I'll see you guys in the next one.